Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, today in calculus we are looking at the second half of the uh, calculus with parametric equations. So last time we talked about if you have a parametric equation that has uh, that is going to represent a curve, how do you solve for the basic calculus stuff? Like say for example, how to get the uh, equation of the tangent line uh, and also find the area under the curve and also the arc length. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take that and extend it a little bit further into the physics realm uh, by looking at the parametric equation as a vector uh, and applying the same thing. So the type of problems that you're most likely going to run into uh, when it comes to parametric equations in the form of vectors would be particle problems. And we did some of this back in the first semester once again. So here, uh, as I said, uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be looking at parametric equations as a vector, uh, aka a particle moving around on the xy axis. Uh, so then that way we can solve for its velocity, speed, acceleration, positions and total distance traveled so all the stuff that we did with those three things the position the acceleration and the velocity uh, we're gonna have just looking at it in vector uh, with a using a parametric equation perspective okay so here we go the uh, here the first problem is going to be the following then a particle is moving along the curve on the xy plane uh, so that it can be expressed by the vector of the following. So x of t and y of t. So that right there, uh, the bracket right there, that's going to be the vector notation of it. Uh, where x is going to be x of t is equal to negative 3 uh, t cubed plus 4t plus e to the t minus 5. And also y of t is equal to t squared minus t minus 7. So basically, I've broken down the whole uh, horizontal and the vertical component of this uh, particle uh, in terms of time. So that's what the uh, vector representation is in this case. So here in the right hand side, you can see that's going to be my equation. And you can also see the curve over here uh, that is presented over here then as a result. So if I remember correctly, then that means that over here on the left, that's when t is equal to zero. And also over here, that is the end where t is equal to five. And you can definitely go beyond those values of t's, but we're just going to go ahead and limit it according to this, uh, you know, for the sake of this problem. So then that way we can solve for the stuff that we need. Okay, so in the first problem, what I want to do is uh, find out what is the velocity and the acceleration as vectors in t is equal to 1. So thinking back into first semester, if you're trying to find the velocity of a function, then that means you need to take the derivative of the function with respect to time. So that is to say, I need to solve for then the following then. I need to solve for uh, dx dt, and then also I need to solve for dy dt, because those are going to be the velocity in each respective uh, component. So dx dt is the horizontal component, has how fast you're moving horizontally. Whereas dy dt is saying how fast you are moving vertically then. So that right there is going to be my answer then. And what I want to do is then I want to solve for it when t is equal to 1. So simple as just kind of like plugging in. So uh, taking the first part, let's go ahead and solve for that. So in the first one, dx dt, uh, looking at x of t being this equation, then that means our equation is going to be negative 3t squared and then plus 4, and then plus e to the t, because that's the derivative of x of t with respect to time. Then we have for dy dt, uh, that's going to be the derivative of this right here. So that is going to be 2t and then minus 1. And as I said, now we're going to go ahead and plug in t is equal to 1. So that will give us now a vector that represents how fast you're going in, the vol uh, in terms of uh, the velocity then in each direction. So plugging in 1 into each one you're going to get negative 3 plus 4, which is equal to 1. And then we have plus e uh, for e to the first power. Then whereas for the y component, that it looks like it's going to be 1 then. So that right there is going to be my velocity vector. So you can write that as v of 1 if you want, uh, just for that notation. For the acceleration, it's kind of the same idea, right? Thinking back again to the first semester, you're taking the second derivative with respect to time. So careful, uh, one thing you should note that is that we're not solving for dy dx, nor are we solving for d squared y divided by dx squared. We're solving for, uh, again, the derivative with respect to time, meaning something with d dt. And that's why we don't have to do all that dividing stuff like we did in the last section. So let me go ahead and get rid of this one more time. And so now let's go ahead and write it then. Uh, the velocity, that's what we have over here. Uh, now, if I'm looking for the acceleration, then that means it's the second derivative with respect to time. So d squared x divided by dt squared. 
comma, d squared y divided by dt squared. So meaning take a der second derivative in this case. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and solve for it when t is equal to 1. So solving for the vector of the second derivative, uh, take the derivative of the top one. That's going to give you negative 6t and then plus e to the t. Comma, and then if you take the second derivative, uh, that looks like it's going to be 2 then for the y value. Now we'll go ahead and plug in uh, when t is equal to 1. Uh, so let's see, plugging in t is equal to 1 into here, we're going to get the vector. Uh, looks like it's going to be negative 6 plus e, and then we also have 2 then. So that is going to be our acceleration at uh, t is equal to 1. Okay. All right, so there's your answer. So hopefully, you know, that one is not too, too bad. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. Now, the next item, what I want to do is solve for the speed of the particle at t is equal to 3. I want to solve for the speed of uh, the particle, the, uh, the speed of the particle at t is equal to 3. Now, uh, in terms of like, what is the relationship between the uh, velocity that I just saw for as vectors and also the speed, the speed, if, uh, one way to think of it is that speed is the absolute value of it. But more importantly, if I were to draw this out geometrically, here's what I'm asking for. Let's say that here is kind of like the curve uh, at, that, um, at that instantaneous moment. Uh, what I saw for in the previous part is the change in the horizontal x component, like how fast you're changing it in the x direction with respect to time. Then uh, we have also the change of the y component uh, with respect to time. So that means it's going to be delta y or dy div uh, divided by dt. The speed is how fast you're going. So that means that, remember, these two are going to be vectors over here. So if I'm solving for the speed, then that means I'm solving for the magnitude of the resulting vector. So that is to say that this guy right here, that is going to be the speed because that uh, is the resulting vector right there. So that is going to be my speed vector. And in that picture, then you can see that the, what I'm trying to solve for is supposed to be the Pythagorean theorem. So what we're trying to get to is the following then. The speed that we're solving for is supposed to be equal to the square root of, uh, let's see, uh, dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt quantity squared, okay? And we're not taking the integral or anything of it. It's just literally going to be uh, the length of the Pythagorean theorem then, or the right triangle, okay? And this is located at t is equal to 3. So going back to our previous example, uh, if you recall that x of, or sorry, um, x prime of t, the derivative of x, uh, is equal to negative 3t squared and then plus 4 plus e to the t. So that means x prime of 3 is going to be equal to negative 27 and then plus 4 and then plus e to the third. Whereas y uh, prime of t is equal to, uh, what do we have, 2t minus 1. So y prime of 3 is going to be equal to 5 then. So my speed at that moment is going to be equal to uh, the square root of 1 squared plus the other then. So let's see, that's a negative 23 plus e to the 3 uh, squared and then plus 5 squared then. So whatever that comes out to be on the calculator, that will be our answer for the speed. Okay, okay next item. Uh, find the total distance traveled for uh, 0 to uh, 5 on the value of t then. So uh, if you look at the curve over here, I want to find what is the total distance traveled. Um, meaning, uh, you know, just relating back to what we did in the previous section, I'm really asking for what is the arc length of this, okay? I'm asking for what is the arc length of this. Uh, if you recall, the arc length uh, from what we saw for previously is supposed to be uh, distance over time, or actually, uh, sorry, not distance over time, is going to be velocity times time. So in this case, uh, here, let me just kind of set that up then. So uh, the total distance is supposed to be, uh, let's see, speed multiplied by time. And uh, in terms of like, you know, how that works, it's going to be delta D is equal to the instantaneous speed, right, multiplied by the delta time that is there. Now, this equation we have already, right, the speed equation, which is right above it. So that's going to be the square root of dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt quantity squared. And then we have delta t on the outside, which we can denote as delta t, um, or, or dt. Uh, that right there is my setup. 
Now, if I want the total distance, right, my total distance, then that's going to be the summation of every single one of those instantaneous moments. So as soon as I throw a summation in front, hey, that's where the integral is going to come in then. So it's going to be the integral of dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt quantity squared and then dt on the outside. And right there, that should look a little bit more familiar because, again, that is the equation of the arc length from the last section. So the integral from 0 to 5, and then we're going to go ahead and take the square root of uh, dx dt squared. So that is going to be negative 3t squared plus e to the t, and then uh, plus 4, if I remember correctly, quantity squared. And then plus uh, for dy dt squared, uh, that is equal to 2t minus 1 to the squared, uh, to the squared and then we have dt. So this is probably something that you are going to have to set up uh, according to the uh, finite integration on your calculator in order to figure out what that's going to be equal to. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's uh, whatever numerical value you get on, uh, on the calculator, that's going to be your answer. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the particle. Uh, but this time, let's say that instead of the uh, displacement uh, is given as a vector. What if the velocity is given as a vector instead? So that is to say, you know, it's kind of the same type of problem, but this time the given is a little bit different. So in this problem, it says that a particle is moving along the curve with the velocity vector, not a displacement vector like previously, of the following. So meaning, you know, we're given the, the uh, velocity, like how fast you're actually going in each direction. Uh, we're also told that t is equal to 1. The particle is supposed to be positioned at uh, the point 2, comma 5. Okay? Um, so what I want to do is solve for, well, whatever it is that they want me to. Okay? The first part, it says, find the equation of the tangent line at 2, comma 5. Okay? I want to find the equation of the tangent line at 2, comma 5. So uh, if I want to solve for the equation of the tangent line, then that means, once again, I need to know what dy dx is going to be equal to, okay? Uh, meaning I want to know what's the slope at that single point. Well, what's given is right up there that dx dt is supposed to be equal to ln of t plus 1. And then in addition to that, dy dt is equal to sine of e to the negative t squared over there, okay? Um, so then now what that means is, uh, I can go ahead and just literally plug everything in because, uh, in order to get dy uh, over dx, then that is going to be dy over dt divided by dx over dt, same as last time. Uh, we're going to plug in the value of t is equal to one because they were told that t is equal to one at that point. Um, so that means on the top, I am going to have sine of e to the negative 1, and then divide it by, uh, on the bottom, looks like it's going to be ln of 2. And so if you put that in your calculator, uh, that's going to now give you the slope, uh, which I did solve for ahead of time, so it's going to be 0 0.519 then. Uh, now that we have the slope, and then we also have the coordinate, then we can put it into our tangent equation, or if you want to call it, uh, now that you know it, it's the first degree Taylor polynomial as well. So your final answer is going to be y minus 5 is approximately equal to 0 0.519 multiplied by x minus 2. And we'll just go ahead and leave it in this form because, you know, we don't want to do ex extra work. The next one, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but not by too much. Um, now what I want to do is I want to find the position, okay, uh, that the particle is going to be at uh, it, when t is equal to 3. And once again, it's because uh, we are, um, it's, uh, we're working from knowing what the velocity equation is going to be. Okay, well, uh, if you're given the velocity equation, then that means that you can take the integral of it in order to figure out what is the total distance that's going to be traveled. So that is to say, um, let's go ahead and work on this one step at a time. Okay, um, let's go ahead and write the following. If I solve for the following over here, the integral from 1 all the way to 3 of x prime of t dt. This right here is going to give me the total distance traveled, okay, from t is equal to 1 all the way to t is equal to 3. Now, the question is, well, what does that help me with? Well, remember, we're also told the position at t is equal to 1, which is going to be x is equal to 2. 
So uh, if I take the total distance traveled and then I add it uh, to my uh, where I'm starting at, then that will give me the answer that I need. Uh, here, another perspective of looking at it is that this is going to be, I can apply FTC number two to it, right? If I say the, by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, this is going to be equal to the following. Uh, it's equal to x of three minus x of one, okay? And we know what x of 1 is because we're told that at the, the x value is supposed to be equal to 2, since that 1 is going to be given. So we can go ahead and throw that in there. All right, so now it's just a matter of integrating it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the integral from uh, 1 to 3 of x prime of t. So that means I need to take the antiderivative of the uh, equation ln of t plus 1 dt. Um, and then that is going to be equal to x of 3, which is what I'm trying to solve for, minus x of 1, which is going to be equal to 2. The antiderivative of ln of t plus 1, uh, if you remember on the side, here, let me just kind of write it out. If I ask you to take the antiderivative of ln of u du, it's supposed to be by integration by part, u multiplied by ln of u and then minus u. So save a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and just throw that in there. And since u is just going to be a first degree, then that means that there's no uh, special chain rule that's going to kick in. So the antiderivative is going to be uh, t plus 1 multiplied by ln of t plus 1 and then minus t plus 1. Okay, uh, And then the boundary from 1 to 3, and that's equal to x of 3, which is what I'm trying to solve for, minus x of 1, which we said is equal to 2. Plug in your upper bound minus your lower bound, and then we should be home free. Um, if I plug 3 into there, uh, that is going to give me 4 multiplied by ln of 4 minus 4. Uh, minus, if I plug in 1 into there, you're going to get 2 multiplied by the ln of 2, and then minus 2. And all that is still equal to the right-hand side. So clean up the math a little bit. Uh, let's see. Um, why don't I change this ln of 4 to the following? 4 multiplied by 2 times the ln of 2. And then we have minus 4. And then minus 2 multiplied by the ln of 2. And then this is now going to be a plus 2. So x of 3 minus 2 over here. Uh, let's see. The uh, This I took out the uh, 2 squared. So that's where the 2 is actually, actually coming from. So there are 8 ln of 2 minus uh, 2 ln of 2, so that's going to be 6 ln of 2. Uh, negative 4 plus 2, that is going to be minus 2, and that's equal to x of 3 minus 2. So the 2s are going to cancel each other out. So that means the x position is going to be equal to 6 and then ln of 2. So that's going to be one of the components then. Uh, now, we're going to go ahead and solve for the other components. So for this one, uh, unfortunately, this is not something that we can integrate. So again, we're going to have to use the finite integration. But in terms of the setup, you get big, you, hopefully you can understand it's the same idea. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and say the integral from where we know where we start is going to be at t is equal to 1 all the way to where we want to find the position, uh, 3, of y prime of t dt. That is going to be, again, the total distance traveled from t is equal to 1 to t is equal to 3. So that is going to be equal to, according to FTC2, y of 3 minus y of 1. So uh, in terms of setup, uh, this right here, we're going to say integrate from 1 to 3. I'm just going to go ahead and write the equation down, and then you can go ahead and solve for it using finite integration. Uh, e to the negative t squared dt is equal to y of 3, and the y value at, at t is equal to 1, we're given that as 5 over here. So then that means that this guy is going to be 5. So uh, take this and probably solve for it on the calculator. So 5 plus the integral from 1 to 3 of sine of e to the negative t squared dt, and that will then give you the y value that's over there then. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time then. Have a good one. Goodbye.